Now, for a very long time, gamma ray bursts were the coolest, most exciting thing in astrophysics, these violent flashes of gamma rays from across the universe. However, there is now a new, or possibly even cooler, type of explosion, the fast radio bursts. Now, instead of coming out at gamma ray wavelengths, the fast radio bursts come out at radio wavelengths, hence the name, and instead of lasting seconds to minutes, they last milliseconds. At the moment, they are one of the biggest mysteries, unsolved mysteries, in astrophysics. Now, it might be puzzling that these have been discovered so recently. After all, radio telescopes have been around since the 1940s and 50s. However, it's very hard to pick up very quick bursts of radio emission because there's so much interference that mimics it. Now, the first fast radio burst was picked up in 2001 using this telescope, the Venerable Parkes Telescope, out here in Australia and no one at the time noticed. They weren't looking for sudden flashes, they were actually mapping hydrogen gas in the Magellanic clouds at the time. And if you do see a sudden flash of radio, usually it's interference. I was once observing at the telescope uh, in Arabri and was getting pulses of radio interference coming at the same time every day. It turned out it was a local farmer. Every time he started his car, there was a sudden flash of radio emission. I could see the car out the window and every time it started up, Boom, big signal came through on the telescope a few kilometres away. Uh, at this telescope, for a while, they were bedeviled by microwave ovens. Every time the astronomers would heat up their food in the microwave oven in their living quarters, a few minutes walk away from this, that would, and they'd open the door, a burst of microwaves would come out, and, oh, strange signal, is it from space? Anyway, this telescope was looking for a long time with very high frequency data, and Several years later, a Lorimer et al. were looking at the data and they saw a rather strange pattern. So what we've got here, this is the frequency in gigahertz and this is the time in milliseconds. And what you can see is a curving, sloping line. If you do a cut through it at one point like here, you see there's a very narrow spike, only lasts five or 10 milliseconds. But what you can see is it happens earlier at high frequency and later and later as you get to lower and lower frequencies. Now most terrestrial interference, whether it be microwave ovens, satellites, mobile phones, any of the myriad of things that can jam our radio signals, you wouldn't get this trend with frequency. It all happened at the same time. This is what you expect if the sudden radio burst was happening from very far away, outside our own galaxy, way outside our own galaxy. Now, if intergalactic space was empty, then the pulse would arrive at all frequencies at the same time. But deep intergalactic space is not quite empty. It's full of a very diffuse plasma. And as the radio waves go through this plasma, it actually slightly slows down the lower frequency radio waves. This is called the dispersion relation. The high frequency ones are slowed down less. And the net result is you get a sliding scale. Eww. So the high frequency first, and the low frequencies later. So when they saw this, they thought, this has got to be real. I mean, it's very hard to get interference that produces that particular pattern. And it has to be for outside our own galaxy. In our own galaxy, you do get the dispersion, but it's much smaller than this. To get enough dispersion, enough plasma between us and the source to get this big slope, it would have to be a very long way away. Well, I, I, it's fair to say we're a bit sceptical, but as time went on and a few more were discovered, and particularly when they were discovered by other telescopes as well, it became clear that we were looking at some sort of incredible extragalactic radio burst. More recently, a number of new telescopes have come online which can measure these far more efficiently and pinpoint on the sky more accurately where they've come from. This is the uh, ASCAP, the uh, Outback Western Australia, and this is Chimes in uh, British Columbia, Canada, and these two are the current leaders at spotting these things, getting accurate positions. And it's become clear that these fast radio bursts happen many times a day. Most of them are not spotted because the telescope is not looking at the right place at the right time, but they're actually incredibly common and frequent. Here are some more data on these things, and you can see a characteristic downward slope with the particular spikes here. Some are brighter and some are fainter than others, but they're all very clear. 
if we get rid of the effect of the uh, plasma and put everything vertically, you can plot the time period. Look at this one here. That's less than half a millisecond. This one maybe about 10 or 15 milliseconds, and this one uh, maybe 5 or 10 milliseconds. So these are incredibly short, much shorter than gamma ray bursts. And in fact, this time is probably not caused by how long the actual radio burst goes on. As the radio burst travels through space, you've got the space with different amounts of plasma, and that will distort the, the rays as they come towards us and give us this delay. So it could well be the actual time of these things is much less than a millisecond. For this very short time, to produce that much radio emission in that short a time so that we can see it far beyond the galaxy, these are briefly outshining the rest of the universe. What are they? Well, we don't know. To produce something this short, it must be a very compact object. And our best guess at the moment, um, we've pinpointed where a couple of them come from. Uh, most of them we haven't got optical counterparts. There are a couple which come from galaxies hundreds of millions to a billion light years away. And most likely at the moment, we are thinking they are some form of highly magnetized neutron star freaking out in some way. To get such an intense emission over such a short time scale, we have to have coherent emission, like a radio. What that means is some signal starts propagating, and as it propagates through the magnetic field, it causes more atoms or electrons to behave in a particular way and builds up, much like in a laser or a maser. Um, only that can produce the incredibly high intensity over the very short periods of time. And our best guess is it's probably something like a neutron star. The fact that we see so many of these radio bursts seems to indicate that they can't be like a supernova that destroys the object. It must be something that recurs in the same object, otherwise there just wouldn't be enough supernova going off in the universe to produce so many radio bursts. Do they repeat? Well, a few of them do. There have been a few cases where we've seen repeat bursts from the same place, further indicating that it's some sort of freak out that doesn't actually destroy the object. It could be that all of them repeat. Uh, it's just that the time between repetitions may be so long we haven't yet seen it for most yet. I think there's one object that's been observed for like a thousand hours and we only saw the one flash. But maybe at a thousand and one hours or ten thousand hours or a hundred thousand hours, there'll be another one. In fact, a lot of people think they have to all repeat, as otherwise there just aren't going to be enough violent objects in the universe to produce all these flashes. So, big mystery, what are they? Something small and violent and coherent, probably involving strong magnetic fields and neutron stars, maybe, maybe not. Many theories are out there at the moment. But as we get more observations of them, particularly more follow-up at other wavelengths, we hopefully we'll get a much better idea pretty soon.